Hi, this is David at TED IELTS, and today I'm going to talk to you about repetition in the IELTS writing test. Specifically, I'm going to tell you why repetition is a problem and how you can avoid it. I will show you three things you can do to improve in this area. As always, this video is divided into chapters, which you can find down below. You can skip forward and backwards to guide your studies, but I think it's better to watch the whole video. I've also added subtitles, so you can turn those on if you have any trouble understanding me. Right, let's jump into today's lesson. Although in some languages repetition is perfectly acceptable, in English it sounds really, really bad. If you say the same thing too many times, people will think it is strange. It feels almost uncomfortable to us. When it comes to IELTS, it is a bigger problem though. It can have a massive impact on your score for the writing test. Let me explain. In the IELTS band descriptors, repetition is mentioned under both coherence and cohesion and lexical resource. For cohesion, coherence and cohesion, it notes that band five essays, quote, may be repetitive because of a lack of referencing and substitution. For lexical resource, it says that a band four essay might feature basic vocabulary, which may be used repetitively. In other words, if your essay is filled with the same words over and over, you might be stuck at around band four or five. This was confirmed by a 2014 study of Chinese IELTS candidates. It found that whilst repetition occurred in essays at band five, six, and seven, it was much more common in the band five essays. Indeed, the author of the study noted that, quote, no substitution was found in band five writings. The word substitution here means an effort at replacing a repeated word with another one. To further stress the importance of this, we can refer to a 2020 study from Indonesia, which looked at IELTS writing performance and found that in terms of coherence and cohesion, repetition was the biggest problem facing IELTS candidates. They found that some candidates, when writing about issues of age, would use the word children up to 14 times in one essay. Even the least repetitive writer used that same word five times. This sort of problem shows the examiner three things. Firstly, it tells them that you do not have the vocabulary to use a range of words. Secondly, it shows them that you probably don't understand that repetition is not good in English. And thirdly, it shows them that you lack the skills to replace words, not just with synonyms, but with pronouns or omission. We'll come back to explain all this later. Our conclusion then is that repetition is a big problem when it comes to IELTS writing, and you absolutely must try to avoid it unless you're happy with a band five. Let's now look at three ways you can avoid repetition in order to improve your IELTS essays. Let's start with probably the best known and yet most troublesome way of avoiding repetition, synonyms. As an IELTS candidate, synonyms are your best friend and your worst enemy. You probably know that they are essential for success in the reading, listening and writing tests, as well as the speaking test to some extent. When it comes to IELTS writing, you can use synonyms to avoid repetition. So they are very useful. Let's say you need to write an essay about retirement ages. You'll no doubt need to talk about old people, but if you just wrote an essay that said old people over and over, it would not be very impressive. In terms of coherence and cohesion and lexical resource, you'd be looking at a very low score indeed. Instead of repeating the same word or phrase, you can find another with approximately similar meaning. For example, you could replace old people with the elderly, old folks, pensioners, retired people, retirees, and so on. That sounds pretty simple, right? Well, a lot of IELTS candidates know this and try to use synonyms as much as possible. This can be good, but often it leads to rather serious problems. The first thing to know is that words and phrases with nearly similar meanings can't always be used interchangeably. There are often slight differences in meaning or tone. Let's take a look at a thesaurus to see what happens when we search for synonyms of old people. Well, here the term geriatric is a little clinical and perhaps even offensive, whilst 
oldster just sounds bizarre to me. A patriarch is the eldest male in a family, and so you could not use it for women, whilst old fogey is just very rude and informal. In short, quite a few of these words would be totally inappropriate for IELTS. In my IELTS writing correction service, link below, I frequently encounter people repeating the word children, which was mentioned in the study I cited before. I often say to my students, you've used the word children far too much, and they understandably ask me, well, what can I use instead? That presents a problem because there aren't many great synonyms for this word. This might be a surprise for anyone who's looked up children in a dictionary or thesaurus. Here we can see there are loads of synonyms, but how many of them could we actually use as a direct replacement for children in an IELTS essay? Honestly, the majority of these words are totally inappropriate. A baby and an adolescent are clearly of very different ages, whilst offspring sounds like an animal and nestling is a young bird. Tyke, urchin and whippersnapper are really informal and archaic and bairn is Scottish English and probably not known to many English or American examiners. Sadly, I see many IELTS candidates trying to put words like ankle biter and kitty into their essays because they found them in a thesaurus, but it just doesn't work. It is confusing, inappropriate, and shows that you do not have a grasp of the language. It is, in fact, worse than the repetition you were trying to avoid. So in cases like that, what else can we do? Well, there are always pronouns. Pronouns are words like he, she, it, they, and so on. These replace nouns in a sentence, and they are very important when it comes to your score for coherence and cohesion. When you look at the band descriptors and see the word referencing, this is what it means. Let's say we were talking about children again. Here is an introduction to an IELTS essay about children and computers. As you can see, the word children appears twice in this sentence. To a native speaker of English, this does not sound good, and to an IELTS examiner, it shows a lack of ability to substitute words. That is because there is a very easy and obvious way to fix this problem. Instead of saying children twice, we can switch out the second use of the word for a pronoun. If you can do this properly, it shows the examiner that you have good referencing skills and the ability to avoid the repetition of basic words. Just make sure that you use the correct pronoun for the thing that you are trying to repeat. If you want to replace children, you need to use they, not it. That's because children and they are both plural form. A child, however, might be he or she. On that note, one other thing to watch here is the assumption of gender. In this case, the writer has assumed the child is a boy, but of course we should try to make it clear that it could be either a boy or a girl. Nowadays, we use they, their, and them to avoid sexist language. This can be a little confusing for some learners, particularly those who have studied from older textbooks. Finally, once you know that the pronoun is correct, make sure that, that it will be obvious to the reader what it refers to. If you mention two or three men in a sentence and then say he in a later one, your reader might not be able to figure out which one is being replaced. To review, if you look over one of your IELTS essays and find that you have used a word too often, it is a great idea to replace some of those words with pronouns. Just be sure that the pronoun matches the original noun in terms of number and gender, and that it is clear to any reader which noun is being replaced. So far, we have seen how we can avoid repetition by changing a word into a synonym or a pronoun. But now we will look at a slightly more difficult skill, omission. To omit something means to remove it. This might seem strange to you because deleting a word might add confusion to a text, and indeed that is why this is a hard skill to master. Let's take this passage here. It's all about history, and so the word history appears quite a few times. It's not excessive, but we could change this to remove one or two mentions and thereby get rid of any doubt over whether it is or isn't too repetitive. 
For one thing, we could omit studying history after benefits because there is, this is already strongly implied. If we still felt like the word appeared too often, we could remove historical from before sources because again, the fact that these sources are historical is pretty clear from the context. Omission is a tricky skill to master because, like using synonyms, it often requires a very deep and intuitive knowledge of the language to do it with a high degree of accuracy. The important thing to note is that removing the word should leave no ambiguity and should not mislead the reader. If we chose instead to omit history from after studying, it would seem as though the benefits come from studying anything rather than studying this one specific subject. Ultimately, omission can lead to natural and nuanced writing, but it is also easy to make mistakes. If you're uncertain of whether a word could be omitted, then it's better to find another way of replacing it or else to go with the repetition and at least be accurate even if there was one too many uses of that particular word. As we have seen today, repetition is something to be avoided in IELTS writing. We can do this in three main ways. Synonyms, pronouns, omission. Ideally, a mixture of these will be used in order to create natural and sophisticated answers that avoid repeating the same words over and over. If you can blend these skills into your work in a way that does not confuse the reader, then you will be well on your way to a better IELTS writing score.